Good evening, everyone. This is Celso Battaglia, Astronomy 10. It's an online course, Evergreen Valley College. And hopefully you're seeing my screen, but that's not what I wanted to see. And this is what I want you to see. And also I would like to go review what what goes on in our course. So we just, we are in fact initiating our third week and we are now focusing on formation of solar system. How not only our solar system was formed, but primarily how stars in general are formed. Um, that is the main point of uh, chapter five, chapter six. In fact, chapter five is more like uh, light and, and telescopes and chapter 6 is um, formation of solar system. So um, what are the assessments going? We have a new discussion going on. Um, discussions, as you might know by now, they start on Monday and they close on Saturday. So the earlier you, you submit your discussions, the, the better, because if I find something that needs to be fixed it i i still have time to let you know and then you can go ahead and fix it otherwise i i, I cannot do it um, if you post things saturday um, i i cannot interact with you so make sure you you present um, discussions before the due date which is saturday so group discussion formation of solar system um, what you need to do, you watch a video, and then there is a mission to one object in the solar system, and I want you to do a, a research on chondrules. What are those little um, uh, objects that, are have, that help to build up primarily our solar system? And and, and, then, and then you have four items that you have to work on. And I will grade each one of them independently. So um, each one is about 2.5. So I give an overall grade for that. And, um, and, and, and pretty much that's it. Okay. So this is the discussion that is going to be done on, on Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Let's go back there. Uh, there are also homework, as always, so just that you keep going. And there is an extra credit, uh, March, this is not correct, atmosphere detect around uh, an exoplanet. So the date is wrong. So that is to be closed on Friday on the 6th, oops, sorry, June the 6th. No, what? No, we are in July. Again, okay. extra credits, um, I recommend you to do, because if you don't do, you don't get extra points. That's the whole story, simple. And you do want an extra point. So your grade, as it is currently presented, gives you the amount of extra credit that you have built up so far. So let's say, so far, let's say you did all extra credits up to today, and then you have 10 extra points on your grade. But if you stop doing extra credit, this 10% of your extra credit will start fall down because you're, you're going to get zero in, in this missing extra credit, right? So I recommend you to do if they are there and try your best. I mean, any extra point you can get is, is a good thing. And now let's fix it. So let's go back to 
our course. So formation of solar system. So when you think about formation of a solar system, it's formation not only of the only star we have in our solar system, which is the Sun, but also formation of the planets that happen to be orbiting this star, and um, satellites that happen to be orbiting the planets that orbit the Sun, and, but also a host of other objects like asteroids, comets, and, and gas that happen to still exist in our solar system. Before we go uh, into more detail, I would like to show this animation uh, that uh, try to simulate what is going on in a star that is undergoing a formation, not of itself, of the star, but the planetary system that is associated with the star. It's the exolupi, and all the ideas that you see here are the results of uh, analysis done uh, photometric, which means we measure the amount of light and variation of light over a time span for the star, and then we try to interpret what is flaring the star, what is dimming the star, uh, as being the result of, an, uh, of the interaction of a disk that happened to exist around the star uh, with its atmosphere. We also uh, observe the star using spectroscopy Topic, uh, techniques that allow us to measure uh, properties of the gas that falls in the star, goes away from the star, and 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 so and also its own uh, photospheric or stellar properties. So let's take a look. And what this simulation show is that when you look at the disk itself, uh, the disk all go around in one single direction, right? Uh, so the, the video just go in other, um, other um, um, segments, but just bear with me here. And the main point I want to show this uh, circumstellar disk going around the star. And it, it, I mean, the process that formed the star is not so much different. The process that forms galaxies, which are more uh, general and complex system, consisting not just of one star, but hundreds of billions of stars. Uh, I know I took the sound out. So there you go. So uh, the, the gas of the disk, because of its formation, uh, the gas is circulating around the star and eventually out of this disk, uh, uh, crystals will be formed as is being shown in this simulation. Uh, and these crystals will grow in size and eventually they will collide among themselves, stick together and grow in size and become what we call planetesimals. So planetesimals are rocky type of objects. Some of them are uh, icy types that were formed in the very beginning of a uh, star uh, formation or in our solar system to be more specific. And, and as these uh, planetesimals grow in size and they keep circulating around the, the central star, they collide and they stick together, they coalesce and they keep growing size. And eventually they become so massive that gravity, the self-attracting force they build because of their collective material, uh, gravity becomes efficient and then more material keep falling on it, not uh, being dragged by uh, electric forces as it was in the very beginning, but but by, by gravity itself. And then eventually you have a planet being formed. So when you look at this uh, simulation here, and you see all the gas of the disk going around in the same direction, that explains and helps you to visualize why in our solar system, all our planets, the planets in our solar system, they happen to be circulating uh, our sun in the very same direction. So let's show you this part and I think uh, I already showed to some of you but I show again so a uh, quick look to inner planets in our solar system show they all go in the same direction see they all circulate the Sun in the same direction as well as these uh, millions of little rocky type material called asteroids 
that happen to lie between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. So they all go around the Sun in the same direction, which is a further suggests that they all came from the same gas, from the same circumstellar disk that were going around in the same direction. Now, if you uh, look in detail of the planets, they also rotate, they also spin around their axis of rotation in the same direction. So if you're looking down on a planet now, it would going around its axis of rotation in the same direction. We call in this case prograde direction, um, rotating counterclockwise as we look north down on the solar system. So from north down on the solar system, this is counterclockwise direction. And um, collisions in the early uh, stages of our solar system might have been responsible for uh, changing the rotation, not the orbital path or the orbital direction, but uh, the directions in which the planets spin, uh, both for uh, Venus and Uranus. So Venus spin in a direction that opposes the direction that all the other planets go about, including the Sun, and uh, this can be explained as the result of collisions in the early stages of our solar system formation. If you, if you look at this uh, animation from the outer planet's perspective, they all do the same. So Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they all go around the Sun in the same counterclockwise direction as seen from North perspective. And that indicates that our solar system altogether, uh, both the Sun and, and the host of objects that um, orbit around it, uh, they all came from the same cloud that is slowly initiated a process of contraction and flattening and, and, and further down in the line, it became this nice place that we call home as our solar system. And there you go. So, uh, in the opening of this chapter, it is given um, learning objectives. Uh, do I, am I in the right chapter? No, I'm not in the right chapter, am I? Just a second. Yeah, I'm in the right chapter, yeah. So, uh, because of the sun, it's, oops, wait a second, seven, there you go. Because of um, the way the solar system was formed, most of the gas, 99% of the gas, got to be located and resided in the sun itself, the star. So think about, you have a gas that is spread over a very large volume in the, in, in the region where the future uh, became the home of our solar system. So you have gas pretty much spread out. So you have uh, one or two light years in, in the mansion um, that this gas is pretty much thin um, and, it, and it probably is part of an association or part of a, um, um, just a um, a, a, a group of stars that are going to be um, probably a future open open cluster. Um, not necessarily the point is the gas that now is compacted in planets and satellites in our sun were spread out over one or two light years. But eventually the density of this gas and the density is a concept in, uh, uh, in physics that gives you the ratio, be ratio between the content of a certain volume. So let's say you take a space, a certain volume, and, and you put a content in there that has certain mass, certain content. So the density is the ratio between that content and the density. So let's say you take a few a hundred marbles, you know, these little marbles, uh, glass marbles. So you put a hundred of them inside a, an envelope, one of these pointy, pointy envelopes, right? Um, so 
the density is is relatively low. You can take this uh, uh, this content and put it in your hand and, and do some hefty. Uh, so it's kind of a death. Now you can take uh, on a different con content. So if you take, for instance, um, a, a scoop of um, of these. Um, uh, in fact, it's better if, since I'm using this example of scoop, it's better if I change the content. So forget about marbles. Let's think about uh, uh, sand. Better sand is better. So okay, get the same sand um, a pony envelope, and then put a, all of it filled with sand, right? So then you 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 take this envelope and you take a content of it, take a little scoop of it, and then you're gonna take a scoop. That has certain amount of uh, sand, and then you you you, you um, so if you take that content of sand and measure the mass, put in a scale, measure the mass, and you have some um, clever way to measure the volume or the space inside this envelope that is being occupied by by the sand, and divide these two quantities, you have a number. Now, if you take now the envelope, the pony envelope, and and you take the same content, the same sand, same amount of sand. Instead of putting a pointy envelope, you put in a in a box that has, let's say, three feet, three feet, three feet in dimension. So like a box, right? Three feet, three feet, three feet, and then you spread the sand in there. And if you could, you 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 could not do that because the sand would would sink down. Again, my example is not working today. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> so take the sand, go out in space, pretty much away from Earth. So uh, the sand is gonna be spread all over this um, this box, right? Because there is no gravity to sink it down. I'm trying to save my my example. So if you now you take a scoop of that material that happens to be floating in space, and you measure the mass here on Earth, I have to go back to Earth. The mass is much less uh, so the density is less so the uh, when you take the the mass and divide it by the volume so you take the same mass of sand you have previously in a pony envelope and now you take the mass and and this mass is spread out over a volume that is three feet three feet three feet and you divide the mass by the volume which is much bigger so the density is going to be less so astronomers can, using uh, by using Newton's gravitational law, they can estimate the density of celestial objects, and by that they can assess uh, what sort of a chemistry or chemical or material uh, these planets are made. And what is found is, if, if you look at planets that happen to be closer to the sun, like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Earth, and and the Moon. Um, Mars satellites, Phobos and Deimos, and the asteroids, they all have rocky type of surface. So their surface are rocky type. They are not liquid or gas, they are pretty much rocky type. Uh, whereas, if you, if you go out and you look uh, in detail about the chemical composition of planets that happen to be further out, like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and their satellites and everything. What, what you find is they they do have rocky material, but not as much as the uh, the planets, inner planets have. In fact, they have much more liquid, much more metallic hydrogen, as we will we will learn. They have much more lighter elements, and therefore their density is much less. And besides, they are huge. So when you compare the physical properties of terrestrial planets or planets that resemble Earth or planets that happen to be closer to the Sun, also called inner planets, uh, with the properties of planets that are further out, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, you find they are completely different. They, they have big difference there. So uh, the inner planets are, are rocky type. The outer planets are gas type or or frosty type, or they do have a rocky core, but uh, the content of it is not a match to the content of the planet uh, itself, which is more liquid, 
and more volatile. So when you compare the density of terrestrial planets with the density of these uh, uh, planets out there, the density is uh, basically different. And, and I would like to show this in this overview, I hope. Uh, our book has, I think it does. There you go. Look at this. The sun has most of the material. This is in percentage of our solar system, 99.80%. So leftovers are here. Leftovers are here. So, um, in fact, later on, we are going to, to learn that when uh, stars are formed, uh, the same thing happens. 99% of the material goes towards the center star, and leftovers happen to reside in the disk that will, in their turn, give rise to a planetary system. Okay. Um, here's an example of a surface, a Mercury surface. So it's kind of a terrestrial, a rocky type. You have these craters, uh, these bulging craters, um, and, and in fact, in, in, in the case of Mercury, you have this um, this world that resemble, I mean, if you look at it, you would think that it looks like the moon or something like that, but basically indicates all the volcanic uh, type of activity, uh, Mercury, and also Mars and Venus and Earth went, or in the case of Earth, it still go through. And as you look in this other picture, you have a, um, a representation, a rendering of this uh, uh, outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and their relative size when compared to Earth. See, So Jupiter is about 10 times, if you take Earth's diameter and put side by side, uh, it's going to feel about 10, 10, 10 uh, Jupiter, uh, 10 Earth match 1 Jupiter diameter. And here's some of the properties that I was trying to, to, to tell you. So as far as density is concerned, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, uh, they have the largest density of the terrestrial planets. And going to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, um, they all are of low density. Think, for instance, water. Water has a density, it's a very light object, has a density of about a thousand. Um, uh, kilograms per cubic meter or or one gram per cubic centimeter that's the unit of of density so uh, in case Saturn Saturn uh, if you take a scoop of material in Saturn uh, it would be floating in water because lower density objects like oil when compared with water oil float in water because the the oil density is less than, than it is in water uh, wood float in water because the wood density is less than that of water. Uh, iron does not float in water because its density is is more than it is water and then sinks down. So when you look at this, uh, the density of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, because it's larger, you also infer that the percentage of heavy atoms in these planets is much larger. So these planets lack volatiles. Uh, so these volatiles, these light um, elements, in fact, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, kind of uh, taken out of the planets during its um, initial formation. And, and looking at these terrestrial planets, we see them all uh, nice rounded because in their past history, at least once they got entirely melted, entirely liquid, and, and that was enough of a high temperature that is felt all this lighter uh, type of gas and volatiles, and most of them went away. So Earth is still retained some. We have water. Water is primarily hydrogen, so we still have some on Earth, but most of the uh, atoms we have um, down here is pretty much uh, heavy atoms. Um, and the Jovian planets, as you look over here, the Jovian planets are of a low density, completely low density. And, and here is, uh, on the fly, an extra credit on the fly. Here's my question that you have to answer 
to get extra credit. In, in fact, we have to answer up to tomorrow. I mean, this is one of these quick extra credit. I, I will give up to Wednesday, end of 4th of July, so you have time to review it. Um, I will ask the question towards the end of this chat room. It's an extra credit on fly. Now, a smaller member of solar system, asteroids. In fact, the discussion we have this um, week is based on this, um, a trip to one of these asteroids to, uh, to detect and to learn more about the history and the beginning of our solar system. It's a fascinating idea. I mean, if you look at our planet Earth, all the material we see on the surface has been somehow modified because of interaction with the sunlight, because of chemical reactions with other material, because of acidity in our atmosphere, you name it. And besides, our planet Earth is very uh, is geologically active. So we have tectonic plates going on and um, surfaces in, in, in most of the areas um, um, that are open on Earth, they, um, they, they have been reprocessed because of uh, tectonic motion. There are only a few regions we call shields they are so pristine as they were since the beginning of our solar system. And these shield rocks, because they are so old, they have been eroded severely, um, resulting from interactions with water, acidity, sun, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if you really want to collect material that indicate, that tell you the story about our solar system in the very beginning, you have to go to the space. And, and that's why the discussion, this week discussion, is so important. So you go to the space and then you collect this uh, material, these chondrules, and then you can verify if their composition can tell you something about the con physical conditions of our solar system in its very beginning, even before planet Earth itself was formed. So I would imagine you should read the, um, the scale model of our solar system, which gives you, I mean, it, it's fascinating to see how, um, in a way, small our solar system is when you compare with, with the rest of our galaxy, which is one among trillions of galaxies, right? So just put that in perspective. So our solar system is very small, but when you look at the solar system in the scales that we are used to, then we realize the solar system is immense. It is, is, is a vast empty space, and most of it, with um, objects here and there, and, and we are just one of it. We are speckled in the solar system. So I recommend the read, reading of this uh, paragraph, and of course, uh, differences meet, between meteor, meteorite, and um, um, uh, meteoroids. So, and that is the extra credit, basically the extra credit question. So, what are the differences? You have to do a little research. In fact, it's, it's right there. But what is the difference between meteor, meteoroids, and, and meteorite? What's the difference? And if you look at um, all of them, they have different types of meteoroid, meteoroids or meteorites or meteors. They are different. Some of them are stony type, some of them are uh, iron rich types, and some of them are a blend of one another. So I would like you to differentiate as an extra credit, as a paragraph in which you tell what's the difference between meteoroids meteor and meteorite, okay? And um, if you find a meteorite in your um, campaign, let's say you go out in the Antarctica and then you join a group of uh, meteorite hunters and then you got one home, uh, how can you differentiate them? I mean, what are the three types of meteorites you can ever find and why they are different? I mean, and what information can you derive by the fact they are different. Origins of our solar system, that's, that's it. 
it's always starts gas and dust and quite poetically speaking when we die we will become gas and dust you know gas for sure and dust well for sure I mean, all the liquids and all the volatiles is going to go away. A bunch of a legion of bacteria will take care of our system, our body. And eventually, everything just go away to where it began. And later on, when we start studying stellar evolution, we will learn the same thing. That stars, uh, when they form, they bring material that exists in the interstellar medium. Gas, primarily hydrogen, oxygen, neon, and helium, and so on, so on, so on, and bring all this material together to form a star. And in the very central part of the star, um, there is a process called nuclear thermal reactions that are responsible for uh, these reactions are responsible for uh, producing new atoms. And and eventually, when the star dies. Because believe it or not, stars are not eternal. Diamonds are not eternal, right? They come and go, Every, as everything else in the universe. So uh, stars, when they die, all these newly formed atoms are spread in the interstellar medium, and they go back. So you can think that uh, the interstellar medium, the medium from which stars are formed, um, in fact, they behave like a bank. Right, bank that gives you some money and lends you some money. So uh, the bank, the interstellar medium, um, uh, lend material to a new, newly formed uh, star system. So the star will take this material and 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 reprocess and 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 in its furnace in the very core of the star, newly formed atoms will be produced, and eventually some of them find its way to the interstellar medium, which is the bank. So when the star dies out, um, there will be uh, a corpse remaining, and we call those black holes, white dwarfs, or neutron star, but um, a large percentage of the gas is returned to the interstellar medium, but with some interest. See, the universe is capitalist. So this interest is newly formed atoms. They are add up to the metallicity of the universe. So as as we speak, the universe is becoming more metal rich because these heavy um, atoms are being produced by stars out there. So, and that's where our solar system starts from gas and dust, gravity put them together, and eventually um, they got to be formed. Okay. And with this, those are the main points of this chapter seven, and, uh, and then chapter eight, we'll explore. Earth more in detail, um, its chemical composition, and then we might review how uh, dating can be made on, on certain rocks on Earth, and also uh, we will discuss the geologic activity here on Earth. Too bad no one show up, but you know, extra credits out there. Um, what are the three types of, uh, what's the difference between meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites? And and if you happen to collect one of them, how can you classify them? What are the three types of classification you can come up with? So bring me a um, conclusion to that, um, probably by 4th of July. So yeah, you can, you can get away from the barbecue for a while and work on this um, extra credit. And good night to all of you.